special little vlog this week. We're looking back on we look back at the year that was and the past episodes are breaking it all down. And now it's time to look at bit at the year to come, as this video will be the first one coming out in January of 2019. Sony and Microsoft have teased upcoming products up and projects. We have well we have the rumors and ongoing speculation around the PlayStation 5, and we have the rumors announcement of an upcoming revision of the Xbox One S with no uh, optical drive on the system. And I have, I have thoughts about the First off, here's the thing with the PlayStation 5. And with the upcoming, upcoming arms race in terms of technological development for console systems for up to the hardware further and further upward, um, onwards and higher and so forth and so on. Look, yes, the um, Xbox Xbox One X has but higher graphical quality on the on its console than the PlayStation 4 Pro does. Yes, it's better graphical capacity. That that's wonderful. I can't take advantage of it. To my right, your left, is the television which I use for capturing gameplay footage for shows, which I get streams from. Um well, that's for Nintendo Power Retrospectives, because for the sake of cost issues and availability, that is a system, those systems I have to capture through an emulator. Long story short, that system, that television, is a 32-inch display. I can't get a 4K TV at price. I can't. Not, oh, I can't afford it. Can't. Don't make them. Not televisions. Monitors, yeah. Um, but this isn't just a monitor. Yes, I have consoles hooked up to it by HDMI inputs, and a monitor with HDMI inputs will work just as well in this regard. But what this all this has is that the TV that um well a um, the monitor doesn't have a remote control. I can control it from across the room if I'm sick and lying in bed and want to watch something. Or if I'm... Uh, it, it has optical audio out so I can hook up a um, well, a um, sound bar to it like I do, as opposed to having to try to deal with HDMI outs and having to, to juggle with things there, um, or other HDMI pass through and that sort of thing, and having to, to, to gamble with that. I talk about that here, and also in fact, HDMI pass through and how HDMI pass through does or does not work with um, with uh, cap with capture devices. I don't have to worry about that, um, and yes, they make. Oh, we could get a larger television. But, as I'm recording this, it's Black Friday. Um, the smallest 4K television I can find is a 40-inch, which would barely fit in that space. Would fit at all. And it's not a good one. Like, it supposedly has high dynamic range, the Samsung model. It has supposedly high dynamic range, but, like, the reviews have looked up its blacks are grays, are dark grays. That's not what I want in the television. I want my blacks to be blacks. I want because and but I also watch movies. You see me review movies for this show. If you read my blog, I write movie reviews there. I watch movies when I put the thing in there. When I put science fiction films like Two Thousand One: A Space Odyssey or Alien. Star Wars in there. I want my blacks to be blacks. Um, and I won't get that with this 
Samsung. And I bring this up in conjunction with the PlayStation 5. Because I'm not an isolated case here. I mean, maybe in the context of the streaming stuff? There are a lot of people, all apartments, space limitations. Where if you have a studio apartment because that's what you can afford in your real estate market, in your housing market, then, okay, you've, okay, I've got a 32 inch TV, that's what I gotta got, go with, and that's why I'm hooking up my computer, my game console, or consoles to, and all this other stuff. And you're going, okay, how much? You're not just looking at, okay, how much can I afford? Financially, you're looking at how much space can I manage to put this in, even if I'm mounting it on the wall. That's assuming you can reasonably mount it on the wall without having any issues with the lease. So there's those questions. And so, 30 in, so you go the 40 inch display and recognize, okay, that's less wall real estate for but other things, bookshelves, like a table, like any other number of things. Or do you go, maybe I don't need 4K. I will go with a ADP display at, and go with it that way. Now, some of these consoles will provide certain performance improvements for 1080p. But at that point, it stops mattering as much whether you have an Xbox One X or a PlayStation Pro. Increased performance capabilities of the PlayStation Pro don't necessarily, or it, how diminished they are in comparison with the Xbox One X, don't necessarily matter as much as you're not necessarily doing the same, not doing the uh, the big revolu resolution boost, and you're not dealing with the other issues that come with going with 4K. But, again, at that point, why do you now need the PlayStation 5? PlayStation 4 Pro will work just as well. Unless the PlayStation 5 ports 4K discs, 4K Blu-rays, which for some Goram reason the PlayStation 4 Pro didn't support, but at that point, again, why not just, okay, new revision of the PlayStation 4 Pro now supports uh, 4K Blu-rays, and maybe and we've updated the graphical hardware and stuff as well, so that we can make the 4K textures look prettier. We can make these 4K textures and these 4K graphics look good, and make it as just a revision. And to bring things up to spec, or maybe a little above, the PlayStation, the uh, Xbox One X, with approximately the same assets. So you're not re you're not requiring a developer to necessarily optimize the same way for one console or another when it comes to doing the 4K release of oh, I have to push my 4K assets further. Um, or the PlayStation or the Xbox, or what have you. But in which case, it's not a PlayStation Five. The revision of the PlayStation 4 Pro. I mean, in which case, I see doing that. Okay, it's a new PlayStation 4 Pro. The old PlayStation, and we're going to discontinue the old PlayStation 4, and we're just putting out the Pro now. That's a simpler way to do it. But that's not what rumors are about. Is the rumors are this is a PlayStation 5. And that seems off. And that seems like Sony should slow their roll. Speaking of slowing your roll, let's talk about Microsoft and their new planned Xbox One 
S revision with no optical drive. My Xbox One S, I like it. It has a 4K drive in there, so that shouldn't the time comes where I do have space for a 4K television. Or when finally the 32-inch 4K display has actually come out good, or even 32-inch 1080p um, Ultra H UHD displays or with high dynamic range or the, like all that good stuff, when those come out, advantage of those, I have that. I like movies. But, we also have, but with the S, with no optical drive, and it's just internal hard drive, just internal storage. There's two ways, the thought is, oh, this is going to be the replacement for the Xbox One S. And phase out the one with the optical drive and do the one with the hard drive. I hope that's not the case. It seems premature for that to be the case. And here's why. I have worked technical support for quite some time including consumer-level technical support, as far as people, people using their computers. And and one of the things I encountered a great deal, my background in doing that, there are very, very large portions of the United States do not have access to high-speed... Not at all. Um, and I suspect there are portions of Canada who have this as well, portions of Mexico, and other, other countries in the world. Countries which are not as developed in a compact manner as, say, yeah, Japan and that sort of thing. Korea. PC bank, the, the uh, PC cafes are still a thing. So, consequently, if you create a console that only people with high-speed internet can use at all, that's chopping off large portions of the country, chopping off overseas servicemen, which is a not insignificant chunk of the market. People buy consoles, buy games for their consoles, and if they are stationed overseas, they take those games with them want to play them on their forward operating base. And also, the USO maintains areas at bases. Maybe not forward operating bases. The place where they have bases where people can play video games to find. And the USO also maintains bases with consoles and TVs, movies, and that sort of thing as well. And there are requirements for what you can and can't do, and how much consoles can not talk to the internet. A lot of these places. Consoles can't for clear security. So these consoles good out there. So there's that chunk of the market that is cut off. Okay, well what about major metropolitan areas? I'm fortunate by living in the Portland metro area and that I have access live in an area which is a fairly solid density of Broadband internet. Seattle would have the same thing, or California with Los Angeles and uh, San Francisco, the Bay Area, San Jose, all of that. San Diego. You live in a major city, you are possibly more likely to have access to internet. Yes and no. Because also, another thing that lots of those providers have, and they can get away with this because there's nothing in the law that says they can't, they place a bandwidth cap. They place a cap on the amount of anything you can download over the course of a building period. Normally a month. Some ISP, when I have, Frontier Fios, they have no cap. You're good. You're good, good to go. I can stream. Fine. As far as I can stream out, I can stream in, watch all the Netflix I want, I can put Giant Bomb Infinite on my television to help keep my cat company while I'm away because it's people talking like people talking as opposed to on the radio where people have radio cadence, which is very deliberate and 
and, and artificial for the sake of comprehension, so it doesn't sound right if you're a cat. So, we get can't see here. She, she climbed on my lap earlier. Skipping around. Catacons right away. I'm not going to disturb So anyway. If you are doing bandwidth cap, things become more difficult. As a good example of this, we had Fallout 76, the online beta going on right now, um, as of this recording. By the time this episode comes out, the beta may be over, it could still be going on. Uh, it all depends how things are shaping up with Bethesda. But in any case, you have your beta for Fallout 76, and this last patch on the PC releases, it was about 20 gigabytes. Also releases were following up at 50 gigabytes. If you have a Comcast bandwidth cap of like 100 gigabytes a month, or, or even if it's 200 gigabytes a month, that's a significant, that's a not insignificant chunk of your everything that you are downloading for that month. That includes Netflix, that includes uh, Hulu, that includes um, patches for other games. If you're just playing Fallout 76 and you're not going on the internet for anything else, it's not a problem. But if you're also getting this console, then, well, all you, all you can do is go on the internet with this thing. You can't put a DVD in it to watch for the evening. Uh, once you've patched your disc game, you disc-based game, um, you can just stick in the disc and play. I mean, you have to download the whole game first. Blu-ray, kind of large. For that matter, you can't choose to play a game unpatched. You can't do, for example, one of these limited run game releases where you have a disc with the full game and all the patches on it, doesn't need to talk to the internet, everything's on there, you're fine work on these consoles, because there's no optical drive to do that. So there's that problem. And, well, okay, so let's super moment you're in a living, living in an area with really good internet. Metropolitan area, high-speed internet all over the place. We are on an ISP which doesn't have bandwidth caps. Currently, also, there is nothing in the law that says that an ISP cannot institute bandwidth caps after the fact. Now, if you've locked in your rate and your contract and that sort of thing, that's maybe not a problem. But also, what if you change ISP? What if, oh, I have to move for my job, or as is often a thing that happens in major metropolitan areas, your landlord says, no, I'm not renewing your lease. Also, you have X period of days to move out. Um, here's money to help cover the cost of moving, but as required by local law. But we're 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 turning this building into condos or other things. This has happened repeatedly in Portland, and is certainly happening in San Francisco, Seattle, New York, other areas. This is not a new thing that that this occurs. Does your new apartment building? have bandwidth caps, can you be confident that the next place you're going to live have the same access to internet? And similarly, do you have the time to have this be a deal breaker as far as give the time to be picky about what internet access your apartment complex or prospective apartment complex has? These are important questions, and when you're in a tight spot, when it comes to finding a place to live, you don't have, like, this becomes more finicky and more tricky. And at which point, your expensive console, your optical drive-free console, Maybe, maybe it's less expensive, maybe it's sold at a reduced rate, maybe this is like a $200 model or $250, but still your console loses a great deal of its utility 
because of the advantage of an optical drive free console. Farther, if you have unlimited internet, if internet access is not an issue, if bandwidth caps are not an issue, if download speeds are not an issue, if all of that is fine, then the, advan then the advantage of that console is you don't have to swap discs, you basically queue up whatever games you are playing on your console, and you can worry, manage your space more, limit yourself to the games that you want on there, and that sort of thing. But again, well, there's all these very real issues in the really real world that make me look at this drive-free console and go, don't see this working the way Microsoft thinks it will. And it's a cir circumstance where if you're living in a technological bubble, and I don't mean in terms of point of view, well, yes, in point of view, but not in terms of where you are on the economic spectrum, but in terms of access to technology, when everybody's being paid well enough where they can live in the place that they want to live in with the access to the to all the internet connection amenities, you forget that even in the United States, which is a first world country, there are people, large numbers of people, whose internet access is significantly lower than everybody else. I would indeed say probably the majority of the American population probably has if not no access to high-speed internet, then access to high-speed internet through a bandwidth app or with some sort of compromise in how you your internet, how you access the internet based on other issues related to your internet service provider that are outside of your control. That said, I can certainly see circumstances where we where a console with no hard drive, which lives and breathes and lives and dies by the internet, becomes much more viable from a major, from, what, from one of the big three. However, those circumstances, I want to be blunt, I want to get actually real world political here, I don't see those happening until 2020. Because here's, what's, here's why. Net neutrality is not the law of the land. It was taken... The, the ruling the rules by the FCC that made it so that made it law that made ISPs have to engage in net neutrality were overturned by the head of the FCC who was appointed by President Donald Trump. Now the Democrats have taken the house. They've lost some ground in the Senate. And I don't, and under circumstances such as these, I don't see the Senate Republicans breaking ranks, even over an issue that is very important to their constituents, access to the internet. So if the House put together a net neutrality bill and worked with Senate Democrats who are also been pushing for net neutrality legislation, like one of my, like my own senators, Biden. I don't know if it would make it through the Senate, or at least not with the numbers, make it past the desk of Donald Trump. What would what what it would take, honestly? Two things, maybe. One of the two, possibly both. You would we would need either solid net neutrality legislation. Made net neutrality, once again, the law of the land, passed through Congress, not just through a ruling by the FCC, that declares not just that net neutrality is, is vital, that internet traffic can't be priority, prioritized one over the other, but also which makes bandwidth caps illegal. Or, alternatively, we get a situation where internet service providers who are also partnered with big content creation companies like Comcast being part of NBC Universal or Comcast owning NBC Universal putting them up. 
those are the two ideal options. There is a third possibility, but that's the bad one. And the third possibility is Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo cut a deal with Comcast, the other ISPs who have bandwidth caps, to say, hey, don't count our traffic against your bandwidth cap. Prioritize our traffic. And Comcast is not going to agree to do that unless they get paid. And Microsoft and Sony are going to pass those pass that cost and it's going to be an ongoing cost on the consumers. Now everybody at this point Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft charges for the their online platform. Card subscription fee. Pay a monthly or annual fee for Xbox Live, for PlayStation Network, and now for Nintendo services. And those rates will probably would probably go up under these circumstances. Because other than that, if they didn't, the choice would be not play online. And possibly even not play your games at all because they might also make the subscription fee um, requisite for being able to purchase content from the online store. Or you pay up. That said, if this happens, that could very much cost like that kind of pressuring could very easily be the straw that motivates legislators to remember Ma Bell. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.